While not always apparent within the United States, the world is very quickly approaching a looming water crisis. Climate change and ever-increasing population is creating a growing water demand. It is estimated that by 2050, more than half of the globe's population will live in a water-stressed area. But how can this be with the world covered in water? The Earth holds over 332 million cubic miles of water. Of that, 96.5% is in the ocean. Another 1% is brackish, meaning it is also too salty to drink, and the remaining 2.5% is freshwater, found in lakes and rivers, groundwater, and stored in the ice caps and glaciers. It is from this 2.5% that we derive our usable water. We use water for much more than just drinking and household uses. 88% of the water used worldwide is for agriculture and industry, meaning that everything around you has a water cost. And as the demand for water goes up, this cost will become more apparent. To help offset these costs, we can better manage water use, improve irrigation techniques, and better monitor losses due to leakage in water systems. Also, finding new or adapting previously unusable sources of water will become ever more important. The idea of removing salt from the ocean water was first recorded in ancient Greece but wasn't put to widespread use until the 16th century when ocean sailing vessels started using thermal distillation methods to create fresh water while at sea. It wasn't until the 1950s that the first large-scale seawater desalination was attempted. The first large-scale operation, built in the United States, used the multi-stage flash process. This was quickly followed by other plants, some of which used the alternative multi-effect distillation as the means of production. The multi-stage flash method heats seawater and introduces it to a vacuum chamber to flash it into vapor. The freshwater vapor at the top of the chamber is removed and condensed. The remaining vapor and salt brine at the bottom of the chamber is then retreated in successive chambers to remove more fresh water. Multi-effect distillation sprays seawater into a chamber with pipes that are heated by steam. As the seawater hits the pipes, it evaporates and separates from the salts. The hot freshwater vapor is collected and used to heat steam pipes in a subsequent chamber where the same process is repeated. Then the steam is condensed and removed from the system as fresh water. Around the same time these first plants were built, researchers created the reverse osmosis membrane, and by the mid-60s the first reverse osmosis desalination plant had opened. In reverse osmosis, pressurized seawater flows over a membrane that allows the water to flow through but catches the salt. This process works at about 50% efficiency, meaning that every two gallons of seawater introduced to the system will result in one gallon of fresh water and one gallon of a hypersaline brine at about two times the water's original salinity. Today, approximately 60% of seawater desalination globally is done through the reverse osmosis process. While there are many operating desalination plants in the United States, the country does not rely heavily on the process to produce its fresh water. Despite global increases in desalinated water production of over 10% between 2013 and 2015, its application lags. North America as a whole is responsible for only about 17% of the desalinated water produced globally each year. The largest producers are in the Middle East region, which leads the globe producing over 50% of the world's desalinated water. However, as western states have begun experiencing more severe droughts and water shortages, Local governments and private firms have begun to look at desalination to address their water demands. In 2015, the Carlsbad desalination plant opened in San Diego, California. The Carlsbad plant uses reverse osmosis and is the largest desalination plant in the United States, capable of producing up to 50 million gallons of fresh water per day. Even at such a high production volume, the Carlsbad plant supplies only about 7% of San Diego's water demand. And if the demand is so high, why do we not just build more plants to meet the need? And while we could, there are drawbacks. Because reverse osmosis only functions at 50% efficiency, that means large amounts of waste brine are produced. Plants the size of Carlsbad can produce over 50 million gallons of hypersaline brine waste daily. When this brine is reintroduced to the ocean, it can cause problems to nearby aquatic life by causing local increases to salinity. Engineers have sought methods to reduce this impact by regulating outflow, placing outflows in areas with high velocity currents, and even using evaporation ponds to try and collect the salt for other uses. The most controversial drawback is the large amount of energy required for production. 
It takes roughly 10 to 13 kilowatt hours of energy to produce a thousand gallons of fresh water. This can be concerning in an era where, like water, energy demand is quickly exceeding production. And more importantly for some, the large amount of energy required also means increased end costs. Depending on the scale of the production facility, desalinated water costs can range from $2.65 to $4.75 to produce a thousand gallons of fresh water, a price close to 10 times that of other water treatment options. To help reduce production costs, engineers have introduced energy recovery devices to capture and reuse energy expended at the end of the desalination process. Energy recovery devices used at the Carlsbad plant recover 46% of the total energy used for a savings of 146 million kilowatt hours per year. Also, advances in membrane technology are increasing the membrane's lifespan, reducing the need for replacement. Moving forward, as scientists and engineers continue to find new ways to make desalination more efficient, reduce the energy needs, and reduce the end costs, the fundamental question becomes, is desalination the solution to our water quantity problems? This can be a difficult question to answer. In areas that are water rich, it doesn't make much sense to spend large amounts of capital on infrastructure to offer a more expensive water source alternative. However, in water stressed coastal areas like those of Southern California, desalination would look to be a good option. While the cost of desalinated water is high and the cost of new infrastructure even higher, it is a low-risk investment. Desalination is a reliable process that can be very resilient in a time of climactic shift. Production of large amounts of water can even occur during extreme drought. Continuing efforts to improve efficiency and technology should reduce energy costs, making seawater desalination a more sustainable water source moving forward. While seawater desalination may not be a cure-all, it can contribute along with other water treatment and recycling methods to help create a sustainable freshwater security plan for the future.